Joining us live from Marlborough House in London is the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, Baroness Patricia Scotland. Her message as the global pandemic surpasses the two million mark has been to reevaluate the status quo and assess the lessons emerging from this catastrophe. Madam Secretary General, thanks for joining us on TVC News at 7. Well, the Commonwealth uh, comprises 54 countries uh, uh, with a combined population of about 2.4 billion people and that's about a third of the world population. Now, with this vast majority, what is the response of the Commonwealth, even as the pandemic rages ravaging countries the world over? Well, one of the great things about having the Commonwealth, which covers five different regions, and we have every sort of country, we have rich countries, we have poor countries, we have large countries, we have small countries, means that we are in effect like a petri dish. We can pool our knowledge, our expertise, and we can help each other. And we have a long history of working together in partnership in order to face some really difficult and uh, challenging problems, similar to that which we are facing right now today. Because we're not just facing the problems caused by the pandemic and COVID-19, we're also having to face up to the fact that we are just at the start of the season when climatic incidents are going to start to happen. And we've seen that right now in the Pacific with a, a category five um, cyclone, devastating a number of those islands. So we know that if we have the opportunity, we need to share our information, we need to pool what works, what doesn't work, and we need to really help each other. Because if we don't do that, we know that none of us can face this pandemic on our own. None of us have all the solutions, but if we come together, each giving what we have, bringing our innovation, bringing our knowledge, bringing our skills and sharing, we have a really good chance. And it's for that reason that the Secretariat created the Coronavirus Tracker Resource Center so we can pull all the information and make sure, particularly if you look at what's happening in Africa now, Africa for once is in a better position because it's behind the curve. Europe and Asia are ahead and it means that we can learn from all the mistakes that have been made because this is something which nobody has seen. Lots of things have been experimental, but we can now learn from those uh, lessons and we can really help each other. So the tracker is the fulcrum of what we know. It is taking the information that's come from the World Health Organization, but mapping onto that all the data that we have about our 54 countries. So we can put creative methods and instruments into the hands of our member states so they can better address these issues. It's, it's bad now. We know that we have to have this health pandemic, but what we're worried about is the potential tsunami that's going to come in terms of financial challenges. What about those small and medium-sized businesses? What about those uh, people working in the informal sector? What about women who we know are really disadvantaged by uh, economic downturns? They are the ones who tend to be hit first. What about our children? We know that domestic violence is going up as our families are staying at home. All of these issues are fundamental issues. And thank goodness, what we've been doing in the Commonwealth before this happened is preparing. We've been looking for the last four years in the Commonwealth since I became Secretary General. We've been looking at universal health coverage with all our health ministers. So we're pooling all the experts. We're pooling our um, accredited organizations. And we've got almost 90 accredited organizations. We've got Commonwealth nurses, Commonwealth doctors, Commonwealth pharmacists. So I was just talking to all our Commonwealth accredited organizations this afternoon. And all of us were saying, okay, what do we have? What are we gonna do? How can we help each other? And you know, it's been a dark time, but it's actually been an extraordinary time because the generosity, the love and the commitment from our 54 Commonwealth countries has been amazing and i came away from the meeting i've just had with the accredited organizations with fantastic ideas that are going to go into the coronavirus 
a center, resource center, and we're going to help with the tracker. And so we'll be better prepared to deal with this. But it's tough times. Um, and I'm proud of the fact that during these tough times, the Commonwealth is really showing we're a family and we're going to stick together. What the Queen said about us, the fact that, you know, when it was the war, the Commonwealth stuck together. Bad times, you know who your friends are. It, and the it, Commonwealth, strong friendships. Indeed, Madam Secretary General, it's a novel disease and it's like it just caught the world by storm and everyone is just trying to come together to find a solution. And only last yeah. week, head of the Commonwealth, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, uh, addressed the world. She reminisced on the World War and she yeah. spoke, you know, she passed across a message of hope and determination yeah, that by coming together, we can actually defeat this virus. As a Commonwealth, what is being done to reinforce the Queen's message? Well, we have looked at the practical solutions that we need. Well, I've already mentioned that we have the Coronavirus Resource Centre, but we're also looking about the money we need. So we are in the process of putting together two things. One is a, what it, one is a procurement platform, because many of our countries are telling us we haven't got the money. We can't afford it. We don't know how to where to go and how to get this equipment. And it's very difficult, particularly for the small countries, to get their um, to get the, the the masks they need, the cloaks they need, and the ventilators. But it's hard for everyone. And therefore, we're putting together this procurement platform to try and make it easier for us to do that together. But we're also looking at the disaster risk finance portal. We were already creating it. We had permission and endorsement from our finance ministers last October when we met together as a Commonwealth. But we know that we don't just need this disaster finance portal for uh, climate episodes. We need them now for this coronavirus pandemic. So we're pooling all the information to try and create a one-stop shop. But we're looking at the climate change finance as well because we've been able to deliver to our member states already 33.5 million dollars and we've got about 500 million dollars in the pipeline but we're also advocating because we know that we believe that we now need a universal um, a vulnerability index, which will take into account the health pandemic, the tsunami that's coming in terms of finance and the climate issues. And that combination of facts means that they were all vulnerable. This is a new norm. The tragedy is we have to face the fact that we may, this may be the first pandemic, but the tragedy is it may not be our last. And I think the Queen was really right when she um, said in her message, you know, when we look back at those, the generation that went through the war, we feel so proud of them. And they stood up and they stood together. And because of the sacrifices they made, we have our freedom today. And we know that now it is our generation's chance, turn to demonstrate what we are made of. Have we got the fortitude? Have we got the commitment to stick together, to work together, to support each other and to be the difference that we need to make in this world? And, you know, the remarkable thing that is in all this darkness, the Commonwealth is turning out to be a beacon because we are sticking together. We are working together. We are showing the resilience. And any country that I have asked, any Commonwealth um, agency or accredited organization, I've said, will you help us? Will you give us what you have so that others will benefit? Absolutely everybody. Indeed, Madam said, Secretary General, at this time we see countries coming together, but as it is, the Commonwealth has a huge population of poor countries. And the Absolutely. same way we have countries that are very rich. Uh, how are you convincing the richer ones to support the poorer ones, especially at this time when a country like the United States has uh, halted uh, its uh, funding of the World Health Organization? I think each of us has to take responsibility for what we can do. We can't control what anybody else does, but what we can control is our response to what they do. And I am really pleased to see that 
as uh, the United States have made its own decision, but what has been our response? What has been the Commonwealth country's response? Our response has been to cling together, to work harder and to embrace each other and to help to make sure this is better. And you know, just because many of our countries are poor, it doesn't mean we lack genius. And there is a lot of a genius in the whole Commonwealth. And sometimes we've said with climate change, look, human genius got us into this mess, but human genius is going to get us out. So for example, we've had some amazing young people who have succeeded in winning the Commonwealth Secretary General's Innovation Awards. Uh, one of them is a young a Jamaican uh, young man called Rayvon, who has created a door handle which is able to, uh, to clean itself. We know that touching handles as you go through a hospital, as you go through a person, we transfer a lot of the uh, germs through our hands. What he has come up with is a mechanism which will kill 99.9% .9 of the germs. Another young man from India has come up with um, a, 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 a mechanism which helps with the neo neonatal breathing for babies who are born prematurely. We are looking to see how that can be used. It's a cheap, effective uh, mechanism that he's created, but it could be duplicated. So we're looking at the genius that is within all of our countries, the rich ones and the poor ones and those in between. And together, I think we're doing things that we would never have done before. This may be the new norm, but we're looking at the digitalization. So we've had over 600 meetings, which we've held virtually. They've been pan Commonwealth meetings. They have been uh, meetings with internal, external. I had a meeting this morning with Arancha Gonzalez, who's the foreign minister of Spain. But I met with the Secretary General of the Francophonie, the Secretary General of the Pacific Island Forum, the Secretary General for the Iberian countries and ourselves. Five women coming together. And what did we say? What can we do? Not tomorrow. What can we do today to help our countries, to help the citizens in those countries to do better? And this might just be that time for all Commonwealth countries to form even a closer bond than ever before. Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, thank you for talking to us on TVC News at 7. Thank you very much.